How to emancipate yourself as a teen, requirements and legal process. Download article. Step-by-step instructions on becoming an emancipated minor. Co-authored by Hannah Madden. Last updated, the 1st of March, 2024 fact checked. Getting emancipated. Emancipation definition. Emancipation eligibility. Automatic emancipation. Emancipation rights. Deciding to become emancipated. Video. Tips. If you're under 18 and already living apart from your parents, or want to live separately from them, you might be considering emancipation. This process gives you the legal right to care for and advocate for yourself without your parents' permission so yo you can support yourself and live your own life. The emancipation process may vary slightly from state to state, but the process is, for the most part, very similar. Keep reading to learn what you need to do to get emancipated as a teen and what to expect from the process. Things you should know. Start the process by filling out a petition for emancipation, either on your own or with your parents. Go to a preliminary meeting with a judge to prove you can support yourself financially by showing proof of income. Attend a court hearing and prove that your parents are no longer financially supporting you. Getting emancipated. Download article. 1. Fill out a petition for emancipation. In most jurisdictions, either you or your parents can file a petition for your emancipation, with or without the assistance of a lawyer. Contact the circuit court in your jurisdiction and ask for a petition, then fill it out along with any other forms you are required to provide. This could include Writing an affidavit to the petition, which is a description of your reasons for filing it. Writing a financial statement describing your personal financial situation. Getting a verification of employment from your job, to ensure you can pay your bills. Getting an affidavit, or description, from either your parents or an adult who knows you personally and believes emancipation to be in your best interest. This could include your physician, social worker, psychologist, teacher, school counselor, school administrator, or minister. 2. File the petition and paperwork with a filing fee. When you have the paperwork filled out, Return it to the circuit court and pay the filing fee to file the petition. Filing fees vary from state to state, but are generally between $150 and $200. Filing fees are required whether or not a judge grants your emancipation. If you cannot pay the filing fee, ask for a fee waiver form from Court staff when you turn in your paperwork. 3. Attend a preliminary meeting. After your paperwork has been processed, you will receive a date for a preliminary that you must attend, with or without a lawyer. Your parents or guardian will be given notice that they may also attend, if they want to. 1. If you have enough money, hire a lawyer to speed and help. Improve your chances of getting emancipated. Search for a family lawyer who has experience in emancipation so they can guide you through the process. The court will make sure that you have a job to support yourself. Financially, your parents or guardian will have the chance to object to your petition if they wish, and explain their reasons for doing so. In some cases, an investigation will be conducted. If your parents or guardian are found to be providing an acceptable 
home, and do not wish for you to be emancipated, your petition may be rejected. If the evidence presented is found to be true, your case will move forward, and a court hearing will be scheduled. 4. Attend a court hearing. At the court hearing, you as the minor are responsible for proving that your parents either approve of emancipation or aren't supporting you, that you have the ability to manage your financial and social affairs, and that you understand your rights and responsibilities. To do this, explain your situation clearly, and offer up copies of the paperwork you gathered for your petition earlier. If you are able to provide proof that is acceptable to the court, emancipation will be granted, and will be kept on file with the court until you are 25. If you or your parents object to the decision, either to grant you emancipation or not, you may file an appeal with the Court of Appeals. 5. Live as an adult. Once you have gained emancipation, you are responsible for living entirely without the help of other adults. You are no longer legally required to rely on your parents for assistance, so it's important to do well at your job and keep up with your bills to create a stable life on your own. 2. What is emancipation? Download article. Emancipation allows someone under 18 to make their own legal decisions. Without emancipation, if you are under 18, you still need your parents' or guardians' permission to do most things. When you become emancipated, you no longer need anyone else's permission, and you can live like a legal adult. 3. Who can be emancipated? Download article. Teens at least 14 to 16 years old. In most states, you must be at least 16 years old in order to become emancipated. In some states, however, that age is lowered to 14 years old. Look up your specific state laws before starting the emancipation process. 4. Teens willingly living apart from their parents or guardians. If you are already financially independent and have been managing your own money, as well as living apart from your parents, a judge is very likely to emancipate you. You must prove to the court that you have a stable income and are managing your money wisely without any help from your parents or guardians. There are many reasons why you might be living apart from your parents or guardians, including your parents or guardians have told you that you cannot live with them, your parents or guardians are physically or sexually abusive, the situation at your parents or guardian's home is morally repugnant to you. Or your parents or guardians have stolen your money. Automatic emancipation. Download article. Teens who are married can often be emancipated automatically. If you are already legally married and you want to have the same rights as an adult, you can file for emancipation. In this case, you can be emancipated easily, with parental consent and permission from the court. 5. Teens in the armed forces can sometimes be emancipated automatically. If you enroll in the armed forces before you're 18, your state may emancipate you. This depends on your state's laws and whether or not your parents or guardians are still financially supporting you after you enlist. 6. If you are already emancipated and at least 17 years old, you can enlist in the armed forces without your parents' permission. What rights does an emancipated person have? Download article. You can get your own place to live. If you're looking into emancipation, 
you may already be living separately from your parents or guardians. Once you're emancipated, you can rent or buy a home to live in on your own. Keep in mind that you will be responsible for all of the bills, including rent, utilities, and other living costs. You can access your own medical care. When you're under age, your parents may be able to access your medical information, including your medical records. After you become emancipated, you have full access to your medical care without having to notify your parents. States vary on whether or not you can keep your parents' medical insurance after emancipation. If your medical insurance specifies that you must be a dependent or reliant on your parents, then you won't be able to stay on your parents' insurance. You can buy and sell property. Typically, underage people cannot buy or sell their own property. Once you become emancipated, you're free to purchase and sell any property that you can afford. You can register a car or get a driver's license. When you're underage, you need to have your parents' permission to register your car or get a driver's license. When you're emancipated, you can do these things on your own. You can also request a certified copy of your own birth certificate without your parents' permission. You can enroll in college or a different school. Before you're 18, you would need your parents' signature to sign up for a different school or enroll in college classes. Now, though, you can do it by yourself. You cannot drink, vote, or stop going to school. Emancipation gives you many rights, but not all the rights of an adult. You cannot drink, vote, or stop. Going to school, even after you're emancipated. 7. Deciding to become emancipated. Download article. Look into the alternatives to emancipation. It's not easy to take on the legal rights and responsibilities of an adult at an early age. Many teenagers don't have the resources to pay for rent, clothes, and groceries without assistance, and a judge won't grant emancipation unless you show you can take care of yourself. In addition, gaining emancipation can cause a permanent rift in a family, and should only be pursued when no good alternatives exist. 8. Consider talking to your school counselor or a trusted adult friend about your options. They may be able to mediate an Agreement between you and your parents that would help you feel comfortable living under their guardianship until you reach age 18. If you don't want to live with your parents anymore, and your reason is that you don't get along with them or you disagree with their rules, you're probably better off staying with a relative or friend for a while instead of pursuing legal emancipation. If you are in an abusive situation, emancipation still might not be the best choice, since emancipated individuals can no longer be aided by child protective services. Contacting your states. Child protective services might be the option that better meets your needs. Make your own money and manage it. When you pursue emancipation, you must prove to the courts that you are financially independent and that you have a job. If you don't have one, find a job as soon as possible to start making money. 9. Write a resume that includes previous jobs, volunteer work, and clubs and other activities. Look in the classified section of your Local newspaper for jobs that don't require a high school. Diploma if you don't have one yet. Save as much of your money as you can. 
Don't spend money on clothes or entertainment. Buy what you do need second hand. Or try to find it for free. Grocery shop frugally, buy cheap staples. Like beans, cabbage and tuna. Open a savings account at your local bank. Find a new home. When you pursue emancipation, you must be able to show the courts that you are living in a permanent home. You will probably not be able to afford buying a home, so look for a small, cheap apartment. Or, set up a permanent arrangement with a relative or friend. Get your parents to consent to make the process easier. The emancipation process is easier if your parents agree that it's the best course. If they don't, you will have to prove that they are not supporting you. 10. How to have fun after exams. Download article. Steps. Steps. Other sections. Questions and answers. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Desiree Panlilio. Last updated, the 22nd of March, 2023 approved. After the hectic days of exams, full of tension and stress, when the exams are done, it's time to have fun. If you're feeling too lethargic to plan some fun escapades post-exam, this article will come to your rescue. Steps Download article 1. Put away all your books, texts and papers. The nice thing is, you don't need to think about those right now. Take a good break from the studies. Don't throw anything away, just in case you need to sit an exam. Again. You never know. In addition, it might be a good idea to save school supplies such as folders or pens. It will save you tons of money if you do this every year. 2. Don't think about how your exam went or what the result will be. What's done is done, stressing out won't change your score. If you worked hard and gave your all, chances are you did okay. Avoid doing post-mortems on the exam with your friends. There is no point and at least one of you is bound to be completely wrong. 3. Rest. Do not feel guilty about not studying. It can be hard to come off the study. Treadmill initially but let yourself do so quickly. Sleep in if you can, take longer. To get ready in the mornings and relax often. 1, 2, 4. Read for pleasure and not for learning. Choose books, comics, magazines. And papers that interest you so that you can enjoy yourself when reading. Enjoy. Learning about your personal interests, rather than the curriculum. None of this. Should feel like a chore. Pick up reading material from a local library. It could be fun to have a book shopping trip with friends. 5. Go to parties. This will require you to be energetic, but parties can also help. You feel more excited and awake. Grab some friends and either hold a party of your own or go to other parties you know about. Dance the night away and catch up on all the missed gossip. Try catching up with your old friends. Going down the memory lane of good times along with friends can help relieve stress and tension of the exams. 6. Listen to music. Lie back, turn on the music and simply enjoy listening to it for a while. 3. 7. Go for drives. Grab a few friends and do some interesting drives. Or grab your soulmate and take a long drive somewhere special. Go to places you love.
visiting and enjoy your time there. 4. 8. Go to the movies. Watch as many as you like. Or, watch films online or on TV. Invite friends over, so that you won't be lonely. You could even host a movie. Party. It's up to you. 5, 6, 9. Get energetic. Go for a bike ride, a run, a swim or a visit to the gym. Get a new exercise regime underway to help you restore fitness that you might have neglected during the exam period. 10. Visit nature. Go for a hike, a stroll or even a camping trip. Getting into nature can help you to relax and feel completely away from everything for a time. Try some stargazing. It's a relaxing and fun way to spend a few nights with friends on the back lawn. You could even pitch tents out there together. 11. Take your dog for walks. Spend more time with your pets. They might have noticed you were stressed for a while, so give them your less stressed self now. And plenty of attention. Community Q&A Question. It's winter and I finished my mid-year exams. What do I do when one day is left for my school? Community answer. Gather all your buddies and spend some quality time, or set up a time when you all can get together during vacation. Not helpful 37 helpful 59. Question. My exams are over, I am 12 and can't drive. My friends live far away, so we mostly meet at school. What can I do now? Community answer. You could text each other or message or even play games over the internet. You could also try to make a new friend or two who live closer to you. Not helpful 43 helpful 95. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Plan a trip away. Perhaps you can't afford one yet but at least you could prepare. A budget and have some savings goals for one. Take up a new hobby. Do something that you want to do for a change. If you love studying, you could get a head start on the next year's curriculum. However, give yourself a break before getting back into it. Everyone needs to do. Something different for a while, to improve their perspective. Submit a tip. How to have fun with your cousin. For a week. Download article. Parts. 1. Planning ahead. 2. Entertaining your cousin. 3. Having fun at home. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article Summary Co-authored by Jesse Davidson Last updated, the 19th of July, 2023 If you are spending the week with your cousin, make sure that they have a good time. If your cousin is visiting from out of town or just has a free week, make some plans to have fun. Spend some time planning ahead to make sure you're well prepared. Find some great entertainment options in your area. Lastly, spend some time having fun around the house. Traveling and going out gets tiring. Downtime with them can be fun as well. Part 1. Planning ahead. Download article. 1. Make sure your cousin is properly accommodated. If your cousin is visiting, you want to make sure they are properly accommodated. This is especially important if your cousin is staying in your home. If your cousin is staying at your house, make sure you have everything ready. Things like towels and toiletries are easy to forget. 
set aside some space like an extra closet or drawer for them to keep their things. 1. You should also make sure your cousin's electronic needs are met. Know what kind of phones and computers your cousin uses. Find some extra chargers lying around to properly accommodate him or her. 2. Create a homey vibe. Provide fresh sheets, pillows, and blankets for the guest room or sofa. Add something a little extra, like a fresh bouquet of flowers or a card welcoming your cousin to your home. 3. Stock up on extra food. You may be eating out a lot, however. You should have options for meals at home as well. Healthy Breakfast food, like yogurt, fruit, and cereal, is important. Have Some snacks, like chips and crackers, as well as some basic Staples in case you decide to cook at home one night. 2. Find fun restaurants in your area. Eating out is one of the most fun aspects of Visiting friends or relatives. Even if your cousin just has a week off school or work, exploring food options in your own town can also be fun. Spend some time finding restaurants in your area. Make sure to accommodate everyone's eating habits. Ask your cousin if he or she has any special dietary restrictions. Your Cousin may be allergic to shellfish, for example, or vegetarian forward slash vegan. Find restaurants that meet these needs. Go for establishments within your budget. If your cousin is visiting from college, for example, he or she may not want to drop a lot of money at a five-star restaurant. You can search restaurants by price range on websites such as Yelp. Ask friends and co-workers for suggestions as well. If you have a Facebook page, consider posting a status saying your cousin is in town or taking a week off. Ask people for suggestions of good restaurants and specifics on what you're looking for, for example. Something cheap something with vegan options, etc. 3. Make a guest checklist. A guest checklist sounds a little formal, but it can really help you plan a fun trip. If your cousin is visiting from another area, consider making a checklist to make sure all of his or her needs are met. First, ask your cousin for his or her travel itinerary. You want to Know when you need to pick him or her up from the airport or bus station. Jot these things down on the checklist so you remember. 4. You should also list anything you need to do on your end. You may want to give your apartment a good cleaning. You might have to get the air mattress out of storage or change the sheets in the guest bedroom. If your cousin has any special accommodations, make sure you keep those in mind. For example, if your cousin is bringing her dog along for the trip, consider stocking up on dog treats. 5. If you haven't seen your cousin in a while, it may be nice to buy him or her a small present. You don't have to go overboard, but... A nice card and a small gift, like a box of chocolates, could be a nice touch. 4. Ask your cousin what he or she wants to do. Lastly, keep in mind what your cousin wants to do. When you have a guest in town, you may be over eager to show him or her your favorite places in town. However, keep your cousins interests as the primary focus. Ask your cousin to give you a call or shoot you an email and tell you some things he or she is interested in doing. If you know your cousin, 
you may already know some of his or her interests. However, it is not a bad idea to let your cousin have some direct input. If you live in a big city, there is a good chance your cousin already has some plans. It's a good idea to know what these plans are ahead of time so you can find the best ways to carry them out. For example, say you live in Los Angeles and your cousin wants to go to Venice Beach. You can see which days. Venice is the least crowded to avoid traffic and difficulty. Parking. Keep your cousin's personal interests in mind. If your cousin is a passionate animal lover, for example, do some research on local zoos. 5. Plan accordingly for younger guests. If your cousin is younger, make sure to take his or her age into consideration. Younger relatives may need special considerations. A very young child may need a night light or other comforting objects to help him or her sleep. You may want to provide some age-appropriate toys. You can stop by a local supermarket and browse the toy section. Toys are usually labeled by age group. You may want to plan events appropriate for someone younger. Look into local parks, children's museums, and so on. If you work or go to school, a younger relative may require supervision when you're gone. Make a plan for a babysitter. If your cousin is in high school or middle school, things may be a little easier. Children of this age are usually more independent. You may be able to leave your cousin home alone. However, make sure you plan events accordingly. For example, you obviously cannot take someone this young to an establishment that serves alcohol. You may want to look into fun, cool events targeted at teens. Maybe a local community center has a music night for teenagers. Part 2. Entertaining your cousin. Download article. 1. Check out local parks. Many towns and cities have local parks. This can be a fun option if your cousin is in town. Taking a long walk through a park is a low cost form of entertainment. Many parks have free or low cost performances on certain days of the week. Browse a schedule online and see if anything fun is coming up the week your cousin wants to spend with you. 6. If you live in a big city, like New York City, Central Park can be a great place to take an out-of-town visitor. If the weather's nice, you can have a lot of fun simply walking through the park and seeing the famous landmarks and statues. Some parks have street performers. If you live in an area where street performers are common, this is something your cousin may enjoy. 7. If you have a younger cousin, a park or a playground can be wildly entertaining for him or her. On your end, you can look up some games to play with children. For example, playing tag in Central Park for an afternoon can be a fun activity for when your 10-year-old cousin visits New York City. 2. Visit museums and art galleries. Almost every city has some kind of museum or art gallery. If your cousin is visiting, consider showing him or her the local culture. Remember, everyone's tastes are different. Try to cater to your cousin's personal interests. If you live in Chicago and your cousin is an art lover, she'll really enjoy the art institute. However, if she's more into culture and history, consider taking her to the Field Museum instead.
Look for deals on museums if you're on a budget. If you're a member at a particular museum, you may be able to get a guest in for free. Websites like Groupon often offer discount tickets for local museums. 3. See any plays or concerts in your area. If your cousin is interested in music or theatre, be on the lookout for plays and concerts in your area. If you live in a small town, local theatres or colleges often put on shows for cheap. Bigger cities almost always have some kind of theatre. As for music, be on the lookout for fun local concerts. If you're on a budget, check out the local music scene. Many bars have local bands play for very cheap. There may only be a dollar five. Ten dollars cover, for example. Eight. If you live near a college, you may be able to find tickets for a college production for cheap. If you live in a bigger city, you can often find discount tickets sold the day of a performance. Once again, keep your cousin's tastes in mind. If your cousin is a fan of punk rock music, he or she probably won't enjoy a country music show. If your cousin is not a fan of serious movies and TV shows, the local production of August Osage County may not interest him or her. 4. Go out to eat. Going out to eat can be a fun way to socialize with your cousin. While also trying local cuisine, make a point of going out to eat during your week with your cousin. Be open to trying new foods, especially if your cousin has adventurous tastes. Together, you guys can try a type of food you've never before eaten. Make reservations when it's necessary. If you're both hungry, waiting for a table on a Friday night can get tiring. If you're eating out on the weekend, reservations may be a good idea. Try to find restaurants that offer other forms of entertainment as well. For example, a bar forward slash restaurant with karaoke could be fun if your cousin is 21. 9. 5. Include your cousin in any plans you have. When you have a guest in town, you want to make sure you include them in your plans. You can allow your cousin to meet your friends and keep him or her entertained in the process. 10. You may have regular social engagements you attend. 4. Example, maybe you always do trivia night on Tuesdays at a local pub. See if your cousin wants to join. If you've been invited to any parties or get-togethers that week, bring your cousin along. Talk to the hosts of any events ahead of time, however, and make sure you can bring a guest. You should always check with your cousin first as well. If your cousin hates bars and trivia, maybe you can sit out trivia this one week. 6. Take your cousin to fun local establishments. It can be fun to show your cousin all your favorite places around town. If there's a coffee shop you love, take your cousin there. If there's an amazing local bookstore, bring your cousin there for an afternoon. Do some research ahead of time, especially if you live in a big city. A trendy dive bar in the Wicker Park district of Chicago may be one of your favorite places. However, it may be completely packed on a Saturday night. It may be easier to hit it up on a Wednesday. Let your cousin call the shots a little while you want to show him or her your town, make sure you're choosing things that are fun for your cousin. If the idea of going to a local comic bookstore bores your cousin to tears, you may want to pick a 
local attraction more suited to your cousin's interests. 7. Keep your cousin's age in mind. If you're hosting a younger relative, keep age in mind. You cannot take someone who's not 21 to a bar, for example, and an adult-themed play may not be entertaining or appropriate for an elementary school student. Try to keep age in mind as you make plans. For a cousin who is still in elementary school, be on the lookout. For entertainment specifically marketed towards children. Look. For children's theatres, children's museums, parks, petting zoos. And so on. If you have any friends who love kids, invite them out. For an afternoon. For a middle school or high school aged cousin, you can provide a mix of entertainment options. A 14 year old may have an interest in a play marketed for adults. However, a 14 year old may still be shy about trying new or different foods. Keep a balance between kid and adult friendly entertainment. Take your 14-year-old cousin to a symphony, but go to McDonald's for dinner afterwards. Part 3. Having fun at home. Download article. 1. Be yourself. If you're having your cousin stay with you, do not go overboard. Trying to impress him or her. It's okay to be yourself. If you're relaxed, both you and your cousin will have more fun. You should keep your home relatively clean if you have guests. This is a common courtesy. However, you don't need to make your apartment immaculate. If you're the type that occasionally has a few dishes in the sink, don't worry about it. 11. Allow your cousin to relax as well. If you have guests, they'll Likely do things slightly differently than you. Try to let this go. Your cousin may put her feet on the coffee table or leave the coffee machine on for a few hours after brewing a fresh pot. Even if you prefer things differently, try to be laid back when you have a visitor. 12. 2. Provide food at home. If you want to have fun at home, Provide snacks. If you like baking, making a batch of cookies before your cousin arrives can be fun. You can also try to prepare some meals at home. Eating out can get costly. You and your cousin can plan to cook dinner together a couple of nights. 13. Consider having a theme dinner night. For example, prepare an Italian meal. Make a batch of homemade lasagna and prepare a nice salad and garlic bread as sides. If your cousin is 21, buy some red wine. If you grew up with your cousin, go for nostalgic snack choices. Maybe the two of you have fond memories of eating Twizzlers while watching scary movies. Buy a few packs of Twizzlers in Preparation for your cousin's visit. 3. Invite friends over. If going out is expensive, stay in for the evening. Invite a group of friends over. You can have some drinks, if your cousin is 21, and just hang out. This can be a low-cost option that can be great if your cousin is on a budget. Consider scheduling a game night. Board games can be a fun means to entertain big groups. Try having a potluck. Invite each guest to bring a dish and pass the dishes around to share. This is a great way to take care of a meal while also socializing with your cousin. 4. Have entertainment options available. If you want your home to be warm and inviting, keep entertainment options available. Four nights when your 
Staying in, you want to make sure there are things to do at your house. If you have a television set, you could watch movies or play video games. Consider renting some movies, online or at a rental store, that your cousin would enjoy. Pick up a pack of cards. Cards are very cheap and card games can be fun. If your cousin has any hobbies, keep those in mind. For example, if your cousin loves crossword puzzles, buy a book of crossword puzzles. 5. Provide reading material. Chances are, you won't be around to entertain your friend all the time. You should provide some reading material. Set out some fun. Magazines and fun coffee table books for your cousin to browse while you're busy. Short story anthologies are also nice for guests. Your guests can feel like they are accomplishing something as people are able to finish a short story in one sitting. A longer novel can be frustrating because your cousin may be unable to finish the story before the week is up. 14. 6. Sit and talk. Sometimes, it can be fun to simply enjoy one another's company. If you haven't seen your cousin in a while, take this as an opportunity to catch up. Have your cousin fill you in on her job, work, social life, and so on. You can also reminisce about old times. If you grew up together, you probably have lots of fun, childhood stories to recount. Share your favorite memories. Try to start off a conversation with remember when. And then bring up something fun from the past. Catch up on what your cousin has been doing. He or she may have some fun stories to share from work or school. Talk about other family members. If you don't see your aunt Jean much anymore, ask your cousin how she's doing. Share news about your parents as well. Minimize distractions to help conversation flow. Turn off the TV. And keep music volume low. 7. Incorporate entertainment for a younger cousin. If you're hosting a younger Cousin, you should make sure your at-home entertainment is age-appropriate. You do not want your 12-year-old cousin to grow bored if you don't keep his or her age in mind. Look for age-appropriate movies, TV shows, and reading materials. There is a special kids section on Netflix you could browse. You can ask friends with kids for advice on children's Movies. Look for magazines at the supermarket that are kid. Friendly. Buy some young adult books to keep in your home. For a very young cousin, coloring books, crayons, markers, and other child-friendly craft options can be a great touch. Look into what music your cousin likes. Create a pad or a station with all of his or her favorite artists. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Tips from our readers. Set out magazines, books, puzzles etc. to entertain your cousin during downtime. At home. Make sure they are age appropriate if hosting a younger guest. Have friends over for game nights. It's inexpensive and allows your cousin to get to know your social circle. Cook a themed dinner together one night. It's a fun way to bond over food and saves money over eating out. Plan some activities you both enjoyed as kids to tap into nostalgia. Reminiscing can strengthen your bond. How to make the most of your summer vacation. 14s. Download article. Methods. 1. Learning new skills. 2. Being productive. 
3. Having fun with friends and family. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Desiree Panlilio. Last updated, the 29th of June, 2024 references. After a busy school year, there's nothing wrong with sleeping late and watching TV or playing video games all day, at least for the first week or two of your summer vacation. If vegging out gets boring, it might be time to break out of your comfort zone. From taking on a project to discovering a new part of town, summer is the best time to have loads of fun and prepare yourself for the next school year or the world beyond the classroom. Method 1. Learning new skills. Download article. 1. Create a website to learn about web publishing. You can learn to create a website from scratch with HTML. Or, you can learn to create a website without computer language skills on a publishing platform like WordPress. Read free tutorials online or watch YouTube videos to learn the basics of setting up a website. Education websites like Udemy and Coursera also offer basic courses that teach you how to create a website. 1. You can also launch a personal blog on a free blogging platform like WordPress, Tumblr or Blogger to share your writings, images and videos. Once your website is up and running, consider publishing your photos videos and original writings. You can share links to your website on social media to build your personal brand, which looks great on college and job applications. 2. Learn a language to make new friends. There are few things more fun than being able to speak another language. For maximum fun, choose a language you've always been interested in learning. Then find learning resources online. If enrolling in a course feels too formal for the summer, consider teaching yourself a new language. You can learn the basics of a language by downloading a language learning app and completing all the lessons. 2. You might watch music videos and movies in your new language. To test your comprehension, you can also look for opportunities to experience your new language in your community. For example, if you're learning French, browse your local free newspaper to find French cultural activities in your area. 3. Take a cooking course to learn culinary skills. Nothing surprises and Delights a family more than a teenager who can cook. Contact community. Centers in your area to find out about cooking class offerings. During the summer, you may even find cooking courses specifically for teens. 3. You can still learn to cook by yourself even if there aren't any cooking classes available in your area. Simply browse your Family cookbooks, choose a dish that sounds delicious, gather the ingredients and follow the directions. You can also follow along with online cooking shows to pick up cooking skills. 4. Play a new sport to stay fit. You might want to be outdoors during the summer if you're athletically inclined. Consider learning to play an individual. Sport like tennis, swimming or golf. Local universities, community colleges and sports clubs are the best places to look for beginner classes. 4. Learning an individual sport over the summer is a great way to stay fit, especially if you play team sports during the school year. Even if you don't normally play sports at school, 
taking any kind of sports class during the summer can help you get in shape and boost your self-esteem. Playing an individual sport also looks great on a college application. 5. Play a musical instrument for a sense of achievement. Like playing a sport. Learning to play a musical instrument is a great way to boost your self-esteem. The summer is a great time to learn to play instruments you've always been curious about, for example, the guitar, drums or piano. Talk to your parents about your desire to learn to play a musical instrument, because they might need to hire a private instructor for you. 5. Learning to play a musical instrument requires time and concentration. Before buying or borrowing an instrument and paying for lessons, consider your family's other planned summer activities. Learning to play a musical instrument on your own is possible if you can't afford a private instructor. Music instruction books and videos make great resources for learning the basics of playing an instrument. 6. Take arts and crafts classes to feel more creative. Local parks and recreation departments usually publish a list of their summer arts and crafts. Classes for teens. Library branches, craft stores and local businesses sometimes. Offer arts and crafts classes for teens during the summer, too. The great thing about arts and crafts classes is that they're inexpensive. They're also short, so you can take several classes over the summer. You can also sign up for online classes and follow online tutorials if you'd like to explore arts and crafts while hanging out at home. From candle making to origami, save your creations for a show. And tell with family and friends at the end of the summer. Method 2. Being productive. Download article. 1. Find a job to earn some money. 6. Start by talking to your guidance counselor. About your desire to get a summer job. Guidance counselors are usually in the know about local summer jobs for teens. Your guidance counselor can also help you create a resume. You might also ask your parents, other relatives and family friends if there are any job opportunities for teens at their workplaces. 7. Consider knocking on the doors of businesses in your Neighborhood to find out which ones hire teens during the summer. Restaurants and retail stores often hire teens during the summer. To make the most of your vacation, apply for jobs that seem like they would be a lot of fun. If you like animals, for example, consider applying for a part-time job at a pet store. 2. Start a business to gain entrepreneurial experience. If you babysit or mow lawns, you're self-employed, so why not organize your efforts? Start by making some flyers about the services you offer and distribute them around your neighborhood. Setting fees for your services helps you know exactly what to charge your clients. 8. Write your appointments in a journal or enter them in your appointment app, so you don't forget any jobs you've agreed to do. Some business ideas for teenagers include cleaning basements, washing cars, walking dogs, feeding pets while their owners are away and helping seniors with household chores. 3. Find an internship to plan your career path. Think about the kind of job you might want after college. Then, work closely with your parents, teachers and 
guidance counselor to identify companies that take on high school interns over the summer. For example, if you're thinking about launching a tech startup. After college, you might try to get an internship at a local tech firm. 9. Internships don't pay but they offer lots of value. In addition to experience, you might snag a great reference for college from your boss or even get hired full-time in the future. 4. Sign up to volunteer to make a difference in your community. Choose Volunteer opportunities based on the things that matter most to you. If you're an animal lover, you might volunteer at a local animal rescue center. If you enjoy spending time with senior citizens, you might volunteer at a local nursing home. Contacting nonprofits in your community is a great way to get started. Volunteering over the summer. 10. Try to keep a journal of your volunteer experiences. You can use your experiences as inspiration for a college admissions essay or other writing assignments in high school. 5. Research colleges to find out which one suits you. The prospect of college is very exciting, especially if you're a rising junior or senior. Every college has a website, so start by visiting college websites that have majors that interest you. You can also read college review websites like USA Today and Princeton. Review to get a sense of things like how much colleges cost and what students think about their schools. Social networking groups on websites like Facebook are great places to find out about colleges. When interacting with students on social media, identify yourself as a high school student looking to learn more about their schools. Consider asking your parents to take you on campus visits. If they're game, they might even organize a fun road trip or two around campus visits. Method 3. Having fun with friends and family. Download article. 1. Plan a day trip to learn about local attractions. 11. You want to choose a place to visit in your city or town that's close by. You can check out a place you've never been or a place you don't visit often, which can still be enriching. Places you do visit regularly can also offer new experiences if you explore them from a new angle. 12. For example, if you usually breeze past a local museum, take some time to check out the exhibits over the summer. Historic sites, parks and recreation areas, walking and hiking. Trails, farms open to the public and amusement parks make great places to explore. You might also plan a trip to a new mall or movie theater that you haven't visited yet. Consider riding the bus or commuter train to see even more sites in your area you haven't seen before. Don't forget to take lots of pictures of your adventure to share with friends. 2. Take evening bike rides to get exercise. Going bike riding on warm summer evenings can be great exercise and lots of fun for the whole family. Play it safe and stick to popular biking trails in your community. You can make the activity interesting by going a bit further along the trail each time you go out. If you and your friends don't have bikes, consider renting them. Not every community has bike rentals, but take advantage of the opportunity if your community has such an option. 3. Organize a neighborhood game night to get to know your neighbors. Get together with other teens and plan game nights. Game night can be just for teens, or you can make the event for all ages. Games that work great for large 
Groups include street hockey, dodgeball, whiffleball and frisbee. The point is to have lots of fun, so consider games that don't require much skill or athleticism. 13. You might plan to play board games and card games, especially for smaller groups. You can build buzz for your neighborhood game night on your favorite social networking site. Try to get everyone who participates to bring a beverage or a snack to the event. Expert tip. Ashton Wu. Board game expert. As the host, you're the maestro of the game night. Welcome your guests and make them feel comfortable. Wait until everyone arrives before diving deep into the instructions. This ensures no one misses crucial details. Your goal is for everyone to have fun, regardless of their competitive spirit. This will make them eager to return for the next game night. 4. Host movie nights to catch up on the latest flicks. Movie nights are easy to plan thanks to streaming video services. All you need for successful movie nights are blankets, pillows and snacks. You can organize movie nights just for your immediate family and separate movie nights just for you and your friends. 14. If you have a projector or someone you know has a projector, you can borrow, consider setting up a screen and showing movies outdoors. Showing movies in the backyard can be lots of fun on a hot summer night. 5. Have a cookout by the lake to enjoy the flavors of summer. No summer would be complete with a cookout by the community lake. The park works. Great, too, if your community doesn't have a lake. You can help your busy parents by creating a to-do list for a successful cookout. Then, delegate responsibilities to different members of the family. 15. For example, have one or two people make decorations, another person plan the games and another person make cupcakes. You might make a quick trip to the recreation area to find entry. Fees and park rules, such as rules for using grills, to avoid surprises on cookout day. Expert Q&A Question What should a 16-year-old do over the summer? Desiree Panlilio Teen Life Coach Expert Answer Set three to four goals for what you'd like to accomplish over the summer. I want to see my grandparents I want to learn to surf and I'd love to read this book. Series are all viable goals that you could pursue over the summer. Not helpful too helpful 12. Question. If my mom is working for three days and needs me to find somewhere to be, where can I go? Community answer. You can go to a friend or family member's house, or if you just need to be. Somewhere during the day, you could go to the library, a public pool, rec center, like the YMCA, or an arcade if your town has one. Not helpful 6 helpful 19. Question. How do I make the most of my summer vacation if I have to stay home and have no friends? Community answer. You can always read, do arts and crafts. Organize your room, and go outside. Also, try going out to places where people your age hang out and make some friends. Not helpful 13 helpful 23. How to be a girl's girl. Download article. Methods. 1. Understanding girls' girls. 2. Having great relationships with other girls. 3. Supporting women overall. Other sections. Video WATCH now. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References.
Author Info Last updated, the 22nd of April, 2024 Girls Girl is a term that's gained a lot of popularity on TikTok in the past year, but What does it mean? A girl's girl is a woman who passionately supports other women Whether it's the specific girls in her life or feminism as a whole Method 1. Understanding Girls Girls Download Article 1. Understand what it means to be a girl's girl Being a girl's girl is about Sisterhood and supporting women in your day-to-day -day life It has nothing to do With how masculine or feminine you are Girls girls are reliable, supportive Friends who uplift other girls a girl's girl uplifts the women around her, compliments other women sincerely, doesn't judge or tear down women for their differences, cares more about women's well-being than the opinions of men, helps women who are having a hard time, stands up for and forward slash or supports victims of bullying. 2. Recognize what girls girls don't do. A girl's girl hates mean girl behavior and would never stoop to it. Rather than criticize girls' style or habits, she supports them and helps them feel good about who they are. 1. A girl's girl does what she can to be helpful, so you won't see her. 2. Gossip or say mean things behind others' backs. Try to make another girl look bad. Backstab. Pit herself against other girls. Judge other women's styles, dating lives, or priorities. Intentionally make a move on another girl's crush or romantic partner. Abandon a girl in need when she could do something to help. 3. Know that valuing women doesn't mean seeing men or non-binary people as worthless. A girl's girl doesn't hate or avoid men in general, and she can have good relationships with guys. She just doesn't automatically prioritize men over the women in her life. It's okay if you have lots of male friends, as long as you don't intentionally avoid women for misogynistic reasons. Having more guy friends doesn't make someone a pick me or not a Girl's girl. A decent person tries to be kind and supportive to people of any gender. Method. 2. Having great relationships with other girls. Download article. 1. Champion other women in your everyday life. A girl's girl goes out of her way to uplift the girls around her. If you admire something about another, Girl, whether it's a family member or complete stranger, make sure to let her know. Try to prioritize complimenting a girl's brains, integrity, sense of humor, accomplishments, etc. instead of just her physical appearance, although telling a girl she's pretty is good, too. Only compliment other girls sincerely. You don't have to pretend to like every woman you meet. If another girl compliments you, thank her. 2. Nurture your female friendships and relationships. Whether it's your mother, sister, girlfriend or co-worker, it's good to have close relationships with the women around you. If you don't have many female friends, try striking. Up conversations with girls around you. 3. Think ahead to understand other girls' needs and perspectives. A girl's girl doesn't want to needlessly put another girl in an embarrassing, stressful, or upsetting situation if she can avoid it. While you can't prevent everything that can go wrong, do your best not to cause problems or make things worse. Remember things that can cause issues for your friends, like a food allergy or noise sensitivity. 
try to plan ahead so everyone can be comfortable and safe. Be discreet when pointing out potentially embarrassing things, like a period stain or broccoli in someone's teeth. 4. Do what you can for a girl in need. A girl's girl is the sort of girl you can count on when you're having a bad time. If a girl around you is struggling or feeling down, see if you can do something to improve her day. Here are a few examples of things you can do in everyday life. Be there when your friend is feeling down. Ask if she needs a listening ear or something fun to do. If she wants to talk, validate her feelings and help her feel heard. Help a classmate learn a concept she's struggling with on her homework. Discreetly help out a girl who has blood on her pants. At parties, help make sure other girls get home safe. Check on girls who look uncomfortable, even if you don't know them. Ask a girl what she needs when she's faced with a tough problem. Offer to help her make a plan for how to address it. Keep in mind, you are also a girl who deserves to be safe and cared for. Don't sacrifice your own well-being in the name of helping others. Strike a reasonable balance so that you can be okay too. It's good to honor personal needs, like going to bed at a decent time or taking care of your project before helping with someone else's 5 respect the women in your family and home you may not always get along but do your best to be a good family member who treats people well be good to any sisters moms aunts grandmas step family and other family members don't insult make fun of or cause problems for the women in your house Try not to do anything that makes their lives harder. Be a decent housemate. Clean up after yourself, do your fair share of chores, and don't be so loud that it disrupts others. Raise issues politely and respectfully. Instead of making accusations, see if you can work together to fix the underlying problem. S. Method. 3. Supporting Women Overall Download Article 1. Be a Feminist Feminism is a political movement in support of reaching equality for men and women, and dismantling the patriarchal system. Being a girl's girl is about recognizing the systematic bias women, and anyone who isn't a cisgender man, face as a whole, and trying to change it. If you're not sure where to start, try reading the works of well-known feminist writers. Make sure to analyze their words critically, though, and remember that their opinions could have been influenced by the time period they were in. Discuss feminist issues with the women in your life. Nearly every woman in your life will have some experience with misogyny and understanding these issues will further your grasp on feminist praxis. 2. Be mindful of the language you use. Don't use misogynistic insults, such as BTCH or SLT, to refer to anyone, no matter what their gender is. Avoid phrases like run like a girl or man up, as they imply women are weaker than men which no girl's girl believes. Don't default to he in conversations about hypotheticals or strangers. For instance, if your friend says she went to the doctor, say were they nice, as opposed to was he nice. Consider using gender-neutral terms like courier and hand person instead of mailman and handyman. 3. Consume media created by women. This includes TV, movies, books, music, 
and art made by female creators. No matter what you enjoy, whether it's rock, songs or cartoons, there will be women behind the scenes making that kind of entertainment. In addition to female creators, pay attention to female characters, and how they're treated by people and fandoms. Do you notice a disconnect in the empathy shown for a female character? Which type of character tends to be favored? Pay attention to and call out stereotypes in media, whether they're against women or another marginalized group. This doesn't mean everything you enjoy has to be totally unproblematic, being aware of the stereotypes being enforced and calling them out is more important than avoiding anything deemed unprogressive. 4. Support all kinds of women. Someone who only supports a certain group of privileged women is not a girl's girl. Women of color, fat women, disabled women, masculine women, LGBT women, etc. often experience the brunt of misogyny, and it's important to uplift a diverse range of voices. Don't make fun of women, even if it's not due to misogyny. Girls Girls don't participate in bullying anyone, especially not women. This applies even if a particular woman is a bad person, call her out for her actions or avoid her instead. 5. Don't belittle other women for not understanding feminism as well as you might. Remember that you were once learning the basics of feminism. 2. If someone asks you a question about the feminist movement, even if it seems simple, try to educate them rather than put them down with your girls. Girl status. 3. You don't have to educate other people all the time, if doing so makes you uncomfortable or feels draining. You can redirect to another feminist or source. You could also say something like, Sorry, I don't have time forward slash energy to explain this right now. 6. Set an example for young girls in your community. Young girls are one of the most vulnerable groups of women, and you can help them a lot by being a strong role model. You can help young girls by babysitting, tutoring, or by just being a good friend. If you have a little sister, be kind to her and try to be a healthy role model. Of course, you should be nice to children regardless of gender. Expert Q&A Ask a question Submit Video Tips Pay attention to those around you who elevate you whenever they are around. Notice what they do that makes you feel emotionally charged then emulate those behaviors. Likewise, notice individuals who make you and others feel down, then avoid the behaviors that make you feel that way. Having both positive and negative models may help you be more attentive and caring to all. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. Warnings. Some people use girl's girl to mean feminine women, and use this to put down women who go against societal standards of what a woman should be. Don't use this term to tear girls down. Supporting women in general doesn't mean enabling toxic behavior. If another woman is acting like a jerk and being rightly called out on it, you don't need to. Take her side. 